Hello and welcome to this episode of Go Woo Adventures. I'm Bruce. And I'm Ishan. This episode, we explore the great city of New Orleans. We stayed at the St. Bernard State Park in Baithwith. We were in site number 16. The sites were spacious and well-maintained. The drive into New Orleans was about 25 minutes. Speaking of the drive into New Orleans, there was a section of road that had these beautiful live oak trees that formed a canopy over the road. Each time we went through here, we were always impressed with its beauty. Our first stop was to have a taste of the famous New Orleans food known as the Bagnac at the also famous Café du Monde on Decatur Street. While we were there, a Dixieland band was playing on the edge of the sidewalk. There's nothing like listening to the live Dixieland music. It is a completely different experience compared to listening to the recorded music. Beignets are basically fried dough with a little powdered sugar sprinkled on top. Very much like a donut. I really don't see why people make such a big fuss about them, other than it is a tradition. Café du Mont is just down the street from the French market, which was established in 1813 and was renovated in 1975. Basically, the French market is really just like a farmer's market. After our coffee and beignets, we walked around the French Quarter a little bit and ended up alongside the Mississippi River. Slavery was widely employed in Louisiana at the time of Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation. There were around 20,000 slaves in Louisiana. Many came ashore here on the bank of the Mississippi River. Today, the river is a major waterway with barges carrying goods up and down its 2,350 miles of shoreline. And of course, all sorts of pleasure and commercial craft make use of the river. We walked around the area known as Jackson Square after visiting the riverfront. This is the home of New Orleans' famous Jack's Beer. It is located right across the street from the equally famous Jackson Square. And Jackson Square is where the magnificent St. Louis Cathedral is located and is named after King Louis IX of France. This is the oldest cathedral in continuous use in the United States and is third church built on this site. The first was built in 1718. The second burned down during the Great Fire of 1788. The third was built in 1789. 
It was raised to cathedral status in 1793. There are usually many artists actually creating their works of art on the street surrounding Jackson Square. Throughout the French Quarter, you will find groups of musicians playing Dixieland music on sidewalks and closed streets. Many times, members of the audience will join right in. source of income for these performers is from donations from the audience. The type of architecture in the French Quarter is known as the Creole style, which often is thought of as French colonial style, but is in fact an architectural style developed in New Orleans. It represents a melding of the French, Spanish, and Caribbean architectural influences in conjunction with the demands of the hot and humid climate of New Orleans. One of the many unique things about New Orleans is its cemeteries. They are all above ground. Because New Orleans sits below sea level, the dead are buried above ground in mausoleums and columbariums, just rows and rows of very large concrete and stone blocks. While traditional cemeteries require burials of six feet below ground in New Orleans, that is impossible because the city is too close to the water table. That's right, Ixian. A traditional grave would have bodies floating up and out of their graves. Not a very pretty sight. This is why they bury their dead above ground as seen here. In most cases, they are several bodies entombed in each of these structures, many containing several generations. We visited this cemetery as part of a citywide tour. Almost every tour offered in the city includes at least one stop at a cemetery.
I was struck by this quotation from St. Teresa's plot. The tour we were on took us through many of the various sections of New Orleans, including the beautiful Garden District. We were going to take the trolley from the French Quarter to visit the Garden District, but when the tour took us there, there wasn't any need to do so, although it would have been fun, and many people do take the trolley. This is the trolley that we would have taken if our guided tour didn't take us on the same route. It is a very popular activity for tourists. The trolley can be boarded in the French Quarter by the river boats opposite Jackson Square. This is St. Charles Avenue in the Garden District. In the 1850s, more millionaires live on this street than on any other street in the United States. The reason for this is because of the invention of the cotton gin and new ways of harvesting sugarcane. As you can see, there are some really magnificent homes along St. Charles Avenue, and that there are an equal number of some more traditional homes. The famous singer Beyonce lives just down this side street. We noticed an interesting building and returned to it after the tour. It was the Milton Ladder Public Library. Here are a few photos we took while visiting it. The next day, we visit the New Orleans City Park at 1,400 acres. It is not only the largest park in New Orleans, but is one of the largest urban parks in the United States. The park is home to the New Orleans Botanical Garden, a cordery forest and arboretum, the New Orleans Museum of Art, and the Louisiana Children's Museum. The park is more than 170 years old. The largest grove of mature live oak trees in the world is located in this park. 
some of the trees are nearly 800 years old. Gardens part of the park has both an indoor and an outdoor section. Here is a small portion of the outdoor park. That was a small sampling of the outside part of the gardens. Here is a small sampling of the inside part.
Much of the landscape of the park is populated with a sculpture garden, containing a wide variety of sculptures placed all along walkways that traverse the park. The sculpture garden covers 11 acres and is adjacent to the museum. The garden is atypical of most sculpture gardens because this garden is located within a mature existing landscape of pines, magnolias, and live oaks surrounding two lagoons. There are more than 90 works of art in this picturesque landscape. The garden was conceived in 2003 with only a few sculptures and by 2019 has grown to its current size.
center of City Park is NOMA, the New Orleans Museum of Art. It opened in 1911 with only nine works of art. Today, the museum hosts an impressive permanent collection of more than 40,000 objects. NOMA is considered one of the top museums in the South. When we visited the museum, it was hosting the impressive exhibit known as Queen Nefertiti's Egypt. The exhibit took up most of the museum's first floor. Here are only a few of the many images we took of this amazing exhibit. As you can see, New Orleans offers many interesting and exciting places to visit and things to do. We only cover a teeny fraction of them here. If you go to New Orleans, we encourage you to plan ahead to maximize your time and enjoyment in this wonderful city. That's all for now, folks. See you next time. See you next time, and as always, please like and subscribe. Bye.